Today in school, a lot of students do projects for their science classes, their math classes, their social studies, and their English. And because of those student projects, they're real quick in adding media, because we love media. Media in that it's text, we'll have still pictures, graphics, we can also have moving pictures, videos, we can add sound, we can add music, we can add narration. We love media. Media makes all of our projects better. The reason why we add media is because it appeals to our senses. It can create a theme or a climate, and the music can put us in a different emotion. And especially our students, they absolutely want media to be media stimulated. For example, if we had a PowerPoint slide up with text and a picture, my generation would look at the text first, read it, then look at the picture and see where the picture fits the text. My students' generation, that same PowerPoint slide, they'll look at the picture first, then look at the text and see how the text fits the picture. So in their nature, they demand media for their learning and for their showcase of learning. So media really does give every student project another dimension. It makes them hardier. It makes it richer. Media can also give a lot of of substance to a student's message through their project. That's all good. And when students create media, we have no problem. They use their own pictures from their cell phones, their video capture from their flip cams or their cell phones, and they are the creator of those works of art. However, when students choose not to create their own media and they go out and gather the media from online sources, then we have to teach our students about U.S. copyright, about fair use, about public domain, the six licenses in Creative Commons, and also attribution. I have students who ask me where to find the media that you can use in student projects that would comply with U.S. copyright, fair use, public domain. And I've created a page on my website, MelanieWiscount.com, a media page that gives over 400 links for students to go and find graphic pictures, moving pictures, music, and sound files. And it, all the way down at the bottom, it actually gives them links on how to create their own. So that way the students are always thinking about if they don't create their own video and music and sound and, and uh, graphic pictures, that they can go ahead and maybe do a, a, ch a change. Uh, have some that are created by them and have some that they gather online. But getting students to recognize other people's creative works, getting to them to be conscious of not just copying and pasting, but respecting other people's creative works is a consciousness I really think as educators we need to give our students. So when my students come to me and ask me about creating a school project and what can I do to make it the best it possibly can be, first thing I talk about is media. Media is powerful. Music can create an emotion in an instant. A sound can help us create a realistic picture in our minds momentarily. A picture paints a thousand words, so in less than a second we see a story from a student's selection of a picture going with their project's content. The first place students go to to find images is Google Images or Flickr. And that, there's no problem with that, but they have to know how to do an advanced search. So they choose those pictures that follow copyright fair use. So they t choose those pictures that are licensed for reuse and licensed through Creative Commons to be able to be used or to be used with a derivative or to share alike. 
On the internet, you can find great images at Wikimedia Commons. You can also use Google Images. Just make sure you do an advanced search, and then you'll click on Images Licensed for Reuse. Same thing with Flickr. Do an advanced search. You'll actually be doing a Creative Commons search at the bottom of that graphical user interface. Picnic is great for auto editing. Also take your own pictures and video with your cell phone, create your own narration, and audit that narration in Audacity. And there's plenty of royalty-free music and sound on the internet. So there's plenty of places to go for public domain media. So it's really important to teach our students about US copyright regulations about fair use in the classroom, about public domain, the six licenses of Creative Commons, and also to give attribution. It's really important that if you take your student project and you put it on a wiki, or you put it on a website, or you put it on a blog, or you put it on YouTube, or you put an audio podcast on a broadcasting portal, it's really important that you are following copyright fair use regulations. You're using public domain that you're giving attribution because it's there for the world to see. So you want to definitely showcase that you're conscientious to follow uh, U.S. regulation. You also want to show that you have respect for other people's creative works. It's just really downright being a good digital citizen. And I think that when you show respect online of other people's works and giving that attribution, people have respect for your content as well. So media definitely makes our student projects much better. It creates an emotion through music. It can, creates a realistic picture in our mind when we see, hear a sound file. When we see a picture, it adds a thousand words to our text. And when we see the video, it's giving us that interactive movement and that flow that we as digital natives really love to see when we give content, build knowledge, and share our knowledge with others.